Welcome to Maya. In this tutorial you'll learn how to move the view as well as objects around your scene and fix some mistakes that beginners often make. In short, Alt and Left drag spins the camera, scrolling your mouse zooms, Alt and middle click drag pans the camera, F on the keyboard enables you to focus on an object and orbit the camera around that. And when it comes to geometry, W on the keyboard is move, E is for rotate, and R is for resize. There's obviously a lot more to it than that, so keep watching. You'll find that starting off in Maya with a Lego scene is the most rewarding way to begin, as you'll only really need to memorize six controls in order to create almost anything out of pre-made pieces. You can download this free Lego scene in the description below or follow along by creating some shapes from this shelf up here instead and just following along by moving them around. If you are using my Lego scene and want to make yours look a little bit nicer, make sure that you've hit the number 5 or 6 on the keyboard and then if you can click on the light bulb up here, um, this enables the lighting in the scene as well as the shadows and even what looks like a golf ball here enables the screen space ambient occlusion for contact shadows and geometry. This may slow down your computer considerably if you've got an older computer so you may find that turning them off makes things smoother. So the easiest control in Maya is probably the scroll wheel to zoom in and out but when it comes to rotating you will need to hold the alt on the keyboard or option on a Mac and drag your left uh, click to spin the camera. You may immediately find that your camera's orbiting some random point in your scene and you'd rather it focus on an object like a brick. As I said earlier, you can click on anything in the scene and hit F on the keyboard to focus on it. Your camera will now orbit around that object. Oftentimes in games to move your screen around, you could make your mouse touch the edge of the screen if you're playing a strategy game and your uh, scene will pan left or right. In Maya it's a bit more different. You've got to hold Alt on the keyboard and middle click on the scroll wheel of your mouse and you can then pan left and right. You may want to do some modeling or editing in an orthographic view like the top view or the side view. To enable this you can tap the space bar on the keyboard. This brings up your top, front and side views. To go into one of these views uh, to make it full screen you can just move your mouse over it and without clicking on the mouse you can hit the space bar and now this is the full view here. And as you can see, it's a perfectly top-down view of the scene. If you try and hold Alt and um, left click to spin the camera, it won't spin because you're stuck in the top view. To go back to your 3D view, you can tap the space bar, move your mouse up to the 3D view and space bar on that again. You don't need to click with the mouse at all. You can just tap the space bar wherever the mouse is to travel between dimensions. If you want to see um, a wireframe in your scene, you can hit 4 on the keyboard and to show your coloured view again you hit 5 on the keyboard and as I said earlier you'll then need to re-enable your lighting and shadows if you want those. We will now move on to how to move objects around properly in Maya. If something isn't working for you keep watching and I will shortly go through how to fix basic problems that I find my students often face when they start off in Maya. To start with, you'll be using this select tool by default in Maya. It's just a cursor over here on the left. That enables you to click on an object like this. I'm going to focus on this with F on the keyboard. Just so you know, my key binds should be showing up here as well. The first thing you might want to do is move a shape around. To move a shape in Maya, you can just go to the move tool over here on the left, or you can tap W on the keyboard, which brings up your arrows here. And then you can move your shape around. It's always best to move the shape with the arrows or these flat square planes here. This keeps them sort of moving on the floor at any angle. What you shouldn't do is move this with the hollow square in the middle. This means that you don't really have any control over how high or low this is above the floor. And if you're not careful, it will sort of sink below the floor as it's doing here. So to stop that from happening, I've hit undo there. To stop that from happening, I use my arrows or this plane here. If you are in the top view of your scene, or a side view for example, it's absolutely fine to use this middle bit to move things around. As you know, they're not going to go through the floor, they're stuck in an orthographic view. 
you can hold X on the keyboard when moving your object so that it snaps to the grid as well. So that's X for snap to grid. If you were to have a duplicate of it, you can hold V to snap to vertex as well. To rotate an object, tap E on the keyboard and it's always best to use one of these, this equator line here to rotate the object. If you just click randomly inside this sphere, it will just rotate at a random angle. Instead of use one of these lines, it will rotate at a set angle like this. If you want to move your object by like, let's say 90 degrees, you can go to type in um, a specific value for it in your attribute editor over here. To get to make sure that this is showing in your screen, just move your mouse to the top right hand corner and click on the channel box button up here. It looks like a stack of layers. Click on that and you'll see there's rotate and scale. If you rotate this and then hit undo, you'll see one of these numbers freaking out over here. I can see it's my rotate Y, that's the one I should change. So I could go to rotate Y and I could type in 90 degrees and the brick will rotate by 90 degrees exactly. That's quite long winded though, so if you'd rather an easier way of doing this, you can move over to your rotate tool by double clicking and you can see here that there's something called step snap. And if you just watch this while on the keyboard, if you hold J, and try rotating the brick whilst holding J on the keyboard. So you have to hold J first and then you can click with the mouse on the equator line and you can see that it rotates by 15 degree increments. You can change this by going to um, step snap and turning it on to relative. And let's say let's change this to 45 degrees and hit enter. I can, um, I could then if I want uh, turn it off. But now when I hold down J and rotate the Lego brick, it rotates only by 45 degree increments. Let's say that I'm, I want this on permanently in this Lego scene because I'm not really going to want to rotate much by anything other than 90 degrees. Um, I can go back to here and set it to relative and then close down my tool settings. Now, without holding J, this will rotate by 45 degree increments. And if I did want to rotate something, let's say a wheel by something other than 45 degrees, I could hit E and I could hold down J and rotate this. And while holding down J, it rotates by anything I want. And if I let go of J, it only rotates by 45 degrees. To resize objects, you tap R on the keyboard, that's R for resize. And you can see you've got these handles here. For resize, I always use the yellow cube in the middle. And I can drag the yellow cube in the middle left or right and it, and it increases or decreases in size and all to scale. If you use any of these separate handles, it sort of stretches the geometry in horrible ways, which you should never ever really want to do. You can use the plane on the floor to resize it at certain angles as well, which can be useful for certain situations. But most of the time I'm resizing stuff with this cube in the middle, this yellow cube in the middle. If you want to invert an object, let's say I have a wing, let's say to go in my car over here for whatever reason, and I want to have one on the other side as well. As you can see in my Lego scene, I don't have the inverse of this shape. So you can use the resize to actually turn this inside out like that. However, you're going to want to have complete accuracy as you do this, otherwise you'll notice that you might end up stretching it and it won't be perfectly correct. So what I usually do is while resizing it, on the right hand side over here, I can see one of these numbers freaking out. And I can see here it's my scale X is, is freaking out. All of these numbers should be one, I must have not resized it properly earlier. But if I want to turn this inside out, I should just have to type into scale X minus one. And now I have the inverse of that. An even faster way of inverting an object is simply uh, to hold J. So while I'm in the R for resize um, option here, I'm going to then hold J on the keyboard. While holding J on the keyboard, I'm going to then resize it using one of these outer handles. So if I use, let's say, this red handle here while holding J, it turns inside out immediately like that. I can use any of these handles to turn objects inside out while holding J. As you can see, I've only got one copy of each brick, so you're going to want to duplicate these bricks. To duplicate an object, you can click on an object and you can hit Command D on the keyboard or Control D on a PC and move your brick out of the way. So I did Control D and then I hit W and I moved the brick out of the way. So you could uh, click uh, Control D and make a wall of bricks like this and then you could select them all either by holding shift on the keyboard and clicking on the other items or you can drag select to select a bunch of objects and then do control D or command D and to stack them on top of each other. 
each time you can select um, even more to uh, have an exponentially growing wall like this. So that's drag select, command D and move them out of the way. Now let's say you want this, these bricks to turn a corner. You think, oh, I will just hit E on the keyboard for rotate. And as you try to rotate the bricks, you'll notice that they sort of rotate like this. This is even clearer if I was, if I was to select this car and all the bricks that make it up. Because it's not a combined object, if I hit E for rotate and try to rotate the car now, you can see it's really freaking out when you try and rotate it like this. So the way to rotate groups of items or selections of items is to first of all group them. So to group a bunch of items, you can select them like this. And on the keyboard, you can do Command G or Control G. And you can see now that they have all gone green instead of white. And if you look for the middle of your grid, wherever that might be in your scene, you'll see that your um, resize or move tool or rotate tool is exactly in the middle of your grid, which is really annoying. And I don't know why Maya does this. Um, it's not been annoying me for the last 10 years that I've been using it. But you have to, every time you group an object, you have to tell Maya to center the pivot back to your geometry. To do that, on your shelf in Maya 2019, there's now a center pivot button, which is about time. And if you click on this blue center pivot button, it will go to the middle. If you can't see that, or you're in an older version of Maya, you should be able to go to modify, center pivot, and it will do the same thing. You can now rotate the whole group as one. Now, if you deselect your group and try to click on it again, you can see that the whole group doesn't get selected. So if you've been used to grouping in PowerPoint or something like that, when you click on a group item in PowerPoint, it will automatically select the whole group. So in Maya, to reselect the group that an object is in, you first click on an object that you know is grouped, and then on the keyboard you hit the up arrow, and you can see then that it selects the whole group like this. So that's click on an object, hit the up arrow on the keyboard, and it will reselect the group for you. If you start to lose track of your groups or want to know if something is grouped or not, you can go to what's called the outliner, which is a list of things in your scene. To find this, you go to Windows, Outliner, and this comes up. I've got one brick selected here, and if I scroll down on my list of Lego bricks here, I can see that down here, there's something called Group 3. If I click actually on the plus button by Group 3, you can see all the group, the bricks within it. And indeed, this highlighted one here is whatever brick I've clicked on over in the 3D view. If you click on the Group 3 name, that selects the whole group. To rename a group, you just double click on it, and type in the name, hit Enter. And that way you can easily manage your groups within Maya. I'm going to close that down. So with these basic skills, you should now be able to make almost anything out of Lego. The car here was made using only the bricks in this pile over here. See if you can have a go at doing this now. But as you do this, I've noticed when my students try similar tasks, they usually encounter quite a lot of the following problems, which you most likely will too. So I'm going to go through some beginner's problems. First of all, it's very likely that you might accidentally right click and drag your mouse which brings up this uh, window which I'll go through in another tutorial and you might end up in some weird view like vertex mode and you may end up seeing all these purple dots and being unable sometimes to select other objects or being unable to move the object as a whole. To escape this for you just hold down right click and let go on object mode. Object mode is a normal mode where you can just move entire objects in one go, like you would need to do to create this car. The next mistake you might make is accidentally holding the spacebar down for too long. And then somehow, let's say for example, you might accidentally drag and let go on let's say left view or something. You'll now notice that your camera is stuck in the side view. And you may think it's all right, I'll just spacebar to my orthographic views. Um, but you will now, now see that every single view is a flat two-dimensional view and you've lost your 3D view entirely. To stop this from happening, if I just spacebar back into this top right-hand window here, which I know should be my perspective view, if this ever happens to you, you can hold the spacebar down, click on the word Maya and let go on perspective view and then everything's fine. The next problem, you may notice that you've, you've hit some keyboard binding that makes uh, all of your objects move around the scene in a very laggy way. So if you, let's say you may want to move this uh, wheel onto this uh, pivot here, but you may notice that when you move, you try and move it, it's stuck in this sort of laggy mode. Or this may be similar for the rotation or even resizing. You may notice that it looks like really laggy and annoying or something like this. If this ever happens to you, um, just check which uh, mode you're in. Let's say I'm in the move mode and it's being really laggy. Just double click on your move tool and you can hit 
reset tool. We happen to have step snap stuck on there, but now that I've reset the tool, I can uh, move it the way I want. The same applies for the rotation and scale tool. If anything goes weird with these tools, just double click on the icon on the left and hit reset tool, and it should then move as normal. If you've still got problems moving your objects, you may be stuck in uh, a mode like this, where you seem to be able to control only where the pivot is as opposed to the object. This is useful for quite a lot of things, um, but to stop this from happening, on the keyboard, hit the insert key up by the backspace button, hit insert on the keyboard, and this will stop happening. And you can then move your object as normal. But you can use the insert button to change the axis that an object uh, rotates around. Um, so for example, on this wheel, I would hit insert and then move the axis down back towards the middle of the wheel here. And to come out of this, moving the pivot mode, I would hit insert and uh, it all goes back to normal. You can obviously do this as well by going to a move tool and there's a button called edit pivot here that you need to make not blue. Next, maybe on the keyboard you're trying to hit the E or R button to move or to rotate or resize object, but you accidentally hit the number four on the keyboard. This brings up your wireframe view, um, which looks really scary at first, but don't worry, you can just hit the number five on the keyboard to bring up your normal view. Six, uh, to bring up textures and you'll have to re-enable everything else that you have set up as well there. Next, instead of hitting W or E on the keyboard, you might accidentally um, hit the number three. This will sort of smooth all of your objects out into sort of like this. It almost looks like an inflatable object. It looks really cool actually. Um, but it sort of would average out a shape if you have a, a simple cube in the middle of your scene and you hit the number three on that it just turns into a ball as it smooths out to escape this mode you just simply have to hit one on the keyboard hitting command z or undo will not undo this it isn't actually a real thing that you've done it's just a simple it's called smooth preview where you can preview what a more advanced command i would do later on so to come out of smooth preview just select your object hit one and everything's fine um, you never want to be editing your mesh in three mode you should always be editing your mesh with one hit on the keyboard like this. Sometimes your shelf up here might go missing and you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse. If that ever goes missing like this, just use a scroll wheel on your mouse to bring it back. Finally, you may zoom out too far. Let's say you choose to hit F on the keyboard, but you haven't clicked on any objects in your scene. If this happens and you hit F, your camera will zoom out um, as far as it can go or as until it sees everything that you've made in Maya. Sometimes this might be further away than the camera can see. If you can see here, I'm zooming out so far that I'm actually losing my scene and you may find that you just can't see anything in front of you. If this happens, um, one option is to hit the space bar and check your other orthographic views and click on an object in there like this Lego brick. Without clicking your mouse in this view, you can hit F to focus and you will zoom back in to the Lego brick. A more permanent way of fixing this might be to uh, click on the camera icon just up here, it says select camera, and then go into your attribute editor, which should be vertically written on the uh, right hand side over here, or it's the middle button up here if it's not. You can then see your far clip plane, is, uh, and you can add a number, sorry, you can add a zero in here really, and that zero will just increase the maximum distance uh, that Maya can see. If you put in too many zeros, you may find that there's weird clipping things that happen. So I often try and leave this as that default for um, until I really have to. Sometimes my students break their cameras completely and I don't know how they do it, um, but sometimes they just can't see anything and everything's lost forever. If this happens to you, you can actually make a new camera by going to Create, Cameras, Camera. A new camera will appear in the middle of the scene like this. All you have to do is while that camera is still selected, which it will be if you just made it, you can do this. Let's pretend you can't see a single thing. You can just move your mouse up to panels, go to perspective, and then go to camera one. We're now looking through the new camera, and you can move this new camera around just like you were doing with your perspective view. Just down at the bottom now, it says camera one instead of perspective. I'm gonna jump back to my perspective view by going to panels, perspective, persp, and this is the default view that you get in Maya. So you should be able to have a go now and practice these skills by duplicating some geometry and moving it over to the grid over here, for example, and start having a go at making your dream car out of Lego. Check my description for the next tutorials you should follow, which should be on how to add color and lighting. 
or how to model custom geometry from scratch.